So here we have the email client. We're going to take a quick look at this and show you a few little tips and tricks inside your email. You notice the email client itself is pretty basic. You have your to, you have your subject, and the content of your email. One thing that you'll notice is missing are your carbon copies. There's no CC, there's no BCC, there's also no priority. Now as I mentioned before, whenever you're inside an application and you see those three little dots, you should take a look to see what's hiding underneath. We're going to grab them and underneath, hidden in that menu, R is R, your priority. You can tap on that to set your priority. We're going to do high because everything's urgent right now. And we'll scroll back again and here's your CC and BCC if you tap on this those fields now are entered into your email. If that doesn't give you enough fine control, you want more control over the, the cursor, you can tap and hold on a word and you notice a new bar appears. You can see it right above my finger. Now the bar will jump from word to word, kind of follows your finger and it'll jump around the screen as you try to place it within the cursor. Of course, this is, there you go. It kind of follows your finger. What's kind of neat, once you get used to it, is that it appears above your finger. So you're not blocking any of the text that you're trying to select. You know, if my finger was right on top of that little bar, I couldn't see anything I was doing. Because my finger rests slightly below, I have much better control over where the cursor is going to go. Right now, I'm going to try to place it right before the end. And when I let go, there I have my cursor and I can very easily edit my word. It takes a little getting used to to see this thing flying around. It does jump from word to word and from letter to letter so it makes it so you're not flying completely around the screen. But it's a nice first step for Microsoft and it makes it much easier to, to correct mistakes when you're typing. One of the neat features of Windows Phone is its ability to take a picture. Um, most of anybody who's taken photos with a camera phone feel the pain of wanting to take a photo but not being able to do so. You gotta take your can't your phone out of your pocket, you gotta fumble with the home screen on the unlock codes, you gotta launch the camera application. By the time you get to the point where you're ready to take a picture, that photographic moment is gone. You've missed your shot and all you're stuck just holding your camera phone. Windows Phone takes care of that problem by letting you launch the camera application even though the handset is locked. Now I'm going to turn off my screen, I'm going to lock my handset, screen's off, can't access anything because it's locked, but yet I'm still going to be able to take a picture. You activate this by taking your camera button and holding it down for about three seconds. There you go. In that time, the camera application launches, you're ready to take a photo, and you're good to go. It's really fast, it's very convenient. For those of you who are wondering, it's not a security risk. It only launches a camera application if somebody was to find your phone, launch the camera, and try to navigate to the home screen. They're presented with your lock code. They would need your password to get into the rest of your handset. Calendaring is a central feature of Windows Phone. It lets you import calendars and sync them from multiple services. You've got your Windows Live calendar, your Google calendar. If you have an Exchange account, you have an Exchange calendar. And it displays all of them within one uh, calendar app. You get your day view and your agenda view. One nice feature they have built into it is the ability to change your calendar colors. If you notice the nice little three little dots in the corner again, and grab them and drag them up, you'll see calendars. If you click on calendars, you get to change some of your settings. You can toggle a calendar on and off, so if you don't want to sync one for a little while, you can turn it off and not sync. And you can also change the color. Right now, my Windows is set to brown. Why don't I pick a nice orange? And if I go back, you'll see now my 
event is now colored a nice kind of yellow orange. You can have multiple colors for multiple calendars. So you can get a nice view of maybe your Google Calendar and your Windows Live Calendar and what events are associated with each one. And it's nice they make it so easy to change the colors. And most people, when they get a handset, one of the first things they do is hop over into the settings, begin setting your ringtones, putting custom ringtones for emails, for phone calls, for text messages, you get to set up all your alerts, kind of fun. One thing that Windows Phone adds is the ability to add a custom ringtone to contacts. You hop over into your People's Hub, you can select your contact that you want to set a ringtone for. When you're viewing their profile information, you will notice a little uh, pencil at the bottom. That is for editing a contact information. So click on there to edit it. You'll see you can change their name, their number, phone, email, and if you scroll down, you'll see ringtone. Tap on ringtone, and you can select whatever ringtone you'd like for this particular contact. We'll select beam, and it'll show up under that contact. You can do that for all your contacts and it's kind of a nice way if you have particular people you want to know who are calling you can give them a ringtone. Much of Windows Phone is based on the cloud and on sharing your data and not keeping it on the phone. One nice feature they have built in is the ability to share any photos. Photos to SkyDrive, can get backed up to Microsoft's online storage service, or you can also upload them to Facebook. Uh, Facebook is nicely integrated into the phone. So let's take a pit look at some of the pictures we have on our phone right now. And if you find one that you like, you tap and hold on it. And once again, you will get your contacts menu. You'll see share. And under share, you'll see messaging, Hotmail, Google, you can upload to Facebook. Uh, upload to Play2, that's uh, LG specific application, and upload it to SkyDrive. If you click on SkyDrive, it'll automatically, you can see right here, it'll upload to SkyDrive. And there you go, that picture will now be on your uh, SkyDrive account. You can access it from the web, uh, web page, from any other browser. This kind of a neat feature it makes it easy and quick to get your photos off your phone and into the cloud. In this little tip and trick, we're going to travel into the web browser and take a look at Internet Explorer. Now, when we're on a web page, once again, you notice our little friendly three little dots. We're going to grab them and navigate up. And you have access to the settings. One very important setting to be aware of that Windows Phone lets you do is the ability to change your website preference whether you're going to view a mobile version or a desktop version of a website. This can be very helpful if there are particular websites that you need to access the desktop version. Um, Windows Phone does a very good job at rendering full websites with the exception of flash content. So there are times you might want to pick desktop over mobile. It's nice to know that you can very easily switch it from within the settings of your web browser. Now this tip and trick here is one that's a you can use at your own discretion, but if you have particular web pages that you go to all the time and you want to add them to your favorites list, like many people, your favorites list start off nice and nice and neat. But by the time you've gotten your phone for a few months, you could have 20, 40, 50 favorites. Navigating through them gets difficult. You have to scroll, scroll, scroll. One way of kind of fooling your browser into putting something at the top of the list is by inserting special characters. Now, if you notice right here at the top of my favorites list, I have Google. But it's not Google. It's dot, dot, dot Google. Putting a character like dot, 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 or the number one will help you cheat and put any of your most favorite websites at the top of your favorites list. I use Google all the time over Bing, so it's nice to have Google right at the top of my favorites. I don't have to scroll down to the G's to get it. There's a little suggestion you do that when you add a favorite. So if you're at a website, you can add a favorite. Um, you can also click and hold and you can edit this. You can change the name, like I said, you can take any existing favorites, go dot 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 
and uh, bring it to the top of your list. While Windows Phone does tightly control the user interface, you're not going to get any things like SPB shell that you got on Windows Mobile. Windows Phone does let you customize it a little bit. One thing you can do is change your lock screen. If we turn off the phone, turn on the phone, you see my lock screen. Kind of plain, kind of boring. I can change that anytime I want by traveling over to the uh, settings all the way down here and if we scroll down a little bit we'll see lock and wallpaper all right here you see a nice little button that says change wallpaper click on that it'll take you to uh, your pictures you can click on wallpapers and you can pick from a variety uh, let's see I'm gonna pick I'm gonna take the fish once I've selected it, you click on the check button to check it. And we will take a look and see what it looks like. There you go. There you go. Now I got a lovely fish on my lock screen. So those little things, people like to personalize their phone, and that's one quick and easy way to do so.